Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we will be delving into a bit of Harry Potter lore focusing mainly on the Elder Wand. We'll be hopefully explaining it all and be asking questions like who does it truly belong to on the way. So get ready, let's get going. Alright, let's get into it and first just explain simply what the Elder Wand can do. As simply put as possible, it is the strongest wand in existence and has, and has magical capabilities beyond any other wand. Let's go back to the start now and go back right to the beginning when the Elder Wand was first created. Basically, there were three brothers, the Peveril brothers, Nint, Antioch, Cadmus and Ignotus. Long story short, they managed to avoid death by using magic to cross a treacherous river where many others had died. But before they made it across, death himself was not happy. He felt cheated that the brothers had been able to avoid and cheat death, unlike many others who tried to cross the bridge. But death was cunning. He pretended to congratulate them, and as a reward for being so smart, he offered each of them a gift. A gift of their choice. Now, the story talks about all three brothers, but we'll focus just mainly on Antioch, as when he was offered, he asked for a one that could defeat all others. Sound familiar? So death went to a nearby tree, which was an elder tree, and created a one from its wood. He gave it to Antioch, who went away happy with his newest prize. Of course, there's the story of the other two brothers, Cadmus and Ignotus, but we'll just be focusing on the Elder One for now. Anyways, carrying on, Antioch wasn't actually in possession of the Elder One for very long. It was, of course, the strongest one to exist and so could defeat all others. So naturally, people were jealous and wanted it for themselves. He was killed shortly after coming into its possession by a fellow envious wizard. That wizard slit Antioch's throat and killed him. So how does the Elder Wand work anyways? What are the rules of it? Well, the important bit is that it will defeat any wizard in a duel so long as he has accepted the wizard holding it as its master. This is the imp main important bit, but that's not all. It also has other extraordinary powers. It can fix wands, which is actually what Harry does to fix his own wand, which is destroyed at Grodrick's Hollow in the Deathly Hallows. So the Elder Wand was passed down from wizard to wizard, leaving a bloody trail behind it. As, if, as to obtain it, people will go to very long lengths. Eventually, it found its way into the hands of a famous wizard wand maker, Maiku Grigorovich. I probably pronounced his name wrong there, though. It's very blurred how the wand got to Grigorovich in the first place, but what we do know is that Gellert Grindelwald, who at the time was a very young wizard, stole the Elder Wand from Grigorovich's wand shop. Grindelwald is considered to be one of the most powerful wizards to ever live in the wizarding world, only being trumped by Lord Voldemort. To gain mastery of the Elder One, Grindelwald shot a stunning spell at Grigorovich, which made him the master of the Elder One. From there, Grindelwald grew to be an extremely powerful wizard, with the Elder One at his side, wreaking havoc in several European countries, killing wizards and muggles alike. But his ownership of the Elder One ended in November 1945. Albus Dumbledore and Gellert Grindelwald finally faced down. It was a legendary battle, and after putting up a strong fight, and despite his ownership of the Elder One, Grindelwald was defeated. And ownership of the Elder One passed on to Dumbledore. However, the difference between Dumbledore's ownership of it and other wizards before him is that he used it mainly for good. A lot of owners before him craved the one for its powers and wanted it only so that they could rule or have power. But this is not what Dumbledore wanted, or his reason for winning it from Grindelwald in the first place. Moving on, Dumbledore used the Elder One to produce brilliant pieces of magic, mainly fighting Voldemort, and managed to make Grubraith and Fire. This is a pretty unknown thing in the magical world, and to find it, you have to dive quite deep into the lore of Harry Potter. Anyways, Grubraith and Fire was a flame that could burn forever without dying, and among its other remarkable qualities, the Elder One was able to produce this fire. Dumbledore also used the one to get great effects in the Half-Blood Prince when Harry and Dumbledore went to the cave to search for Voldemort's locket, which was of course a Horcrux. Dumbledore used it in that pretty breathtaking scene when he used it to conjure an enormous firestorm to burn the Inferi. Notably, he did this whilst in a pretty weak physical state, mind you. However, this is when things get a little more complicated because this is when the story of the Elder One gets pretty interesting. So let's get through it by, bit by bit. Firstly, after getting the locket and defeating the Inferi, Harry and Dumbledore returned to Hogwarts, operating to Hogsmeade. After seeing the dark mark looming over the Astronomy Tower, the highest point at Hogwarts, they rushed back to the castle. This is when things get important. Dumbledore, once they reach the Astronomy Tower, tells Harry not to interfere at all with what was about to happen between Dumbledore and the Death Eaters and any events that would take place. In fact, Dumbledore was so adamant that he put a body van curse on Harry to prevent him from doing anything. The problem was Dumbledore was extremely weakened by the potion which he had to drink in the cave and was not in a well enough condition to duel at all. So when Draco Malfoy, who was under serious pressure from the Dark Lord to kill Dumbledore, arrived on the scene. By the way, the reason Draco was under pressure was because he had tried to, uh, he had tried to kill Dumbledore as a punishment for Lucius's failed retrieval of the prophecy at the Ministry of Magic last year, which by the way is a completely different story. 
Anyway, he disarmed Dumbledore, sending the Elder One flying across the room. This is where Dumbledore's plan goes wrong. You see, he knew he was going to die as there was a disease spreading through him, which he suffered before the school year even started. His plan was that Severus Snape would be the one to kill him, which is what they, had, what they had previously arranged. This way, Dumbledore would accept death and allow himself to die, so the Elder One would not be able to latch itself onto any other master from before Dumbledore's death. Another reason why Snape had to be the one to kill him was so that A, Draco's soul wouldn't be tarnished, and B, to save himself from a more agonising death. Pretty smart from Dumbledore, but of course Draco disarming, disarmed him, so the Elder One belonged to him. Snape then killed Dumbledore in a heartbreaking moment for all the students and faculty of Hogwarts. Anyhow, Draco Malfoy now has mastery of the Elder One, but he doesn't know it. The one is placed with Dumbledore in his grave. Now let's go forward a bit and turn our attentions to the one and only Lord Voldemort. He is on the hunt for the Elder One. After the Battle of the Seven Potters at the beginning of the Deathly Hallows, in which he failed to defeat Harry, um, his wand broke, and enraged he went to Mr. Garrick Ollivander, the wand maker who sold Harry his wand before he went to Hogwarts. After getting information out of Ollivander, he began his search in earnest for the Elder One, not only to defeat Harry Potter, but to become the most powerful wizard in the world. This all takes roughly around um, 1997 and 1998, soon after Voldemort visited Grindelwald, who was in his cell in Normengard. Yet if you didn't know, after Grindelwald was defeated by Dumbledore, he was locked away in a cell in Normengard, which ironically was created by Grindelwald himself to hold his prisoners. Anyways, he killed Grindelwald and continued his relentless rampage for the Elder Wand. After a big search and a few murders on the way, you know, just some light work, Voldemort broke into Dumbledore's grave and stole the Elder Wand from him. Now, the Elder One didn't belong to Voldemort, as we know that it belonged to Draco Malfoy at that time. However, Voldemort thought that it was Snape who was the true master of the Elder One. Once he realised that the Elder One was not living up to its full potential during the Battle of Hogwarts, Voldemort killed Snape in an attempt to finally have mastery of the Elder One. But, whoa, we're going way too far ahead. Let's circle back to before the Battle of Hogwarts, or even before Harry, Ron and Hermione broke into Gringotts. Let's go to Malfoy Manor, where Harry, Ron, Hermione, Luna, Lovegood, Ollivander and the Goblin Griphook were being held captive. After a brief tussle, Harry managed to overpower Draco Malfoy. This is huge, as it means that Harry is now the master of the Elder One, but Voldemort doesn't know that. Eventually, Harry and Co. escape, and Harry has Draco's wand. Then let's go back to the Battle of Hogwarts, who we mentioned before. Voldemort kills Snape, but in a futile attempt, as Snape is not the owner of it. Then comes the main bit. After Harry looks in the pensive, he goes to the Forbidden Forest where Voldemort is ready to finish Harry off once and for all. But Voldemort failed, but instead the Horcrux that lived in Harry was destroyed. This, however, is a common misconception that the Elder One was the reason that Voldemort wasn't able to kill Harry in that moment, but that's not true. It was actually the, sac the sacrifice that Lily Potter made uh, all the way before Philosopher's Stone when Harry was still a baby. Then, after a while, they finally have the final battle of evil versus good, with Voldemort wielding the Elder Wand. The thing is, Voldemort believes that he is the master of the Elder Wand in this moment because he killed Snape, but because we know for a fact that he isn't. Then the most pivotal part of this whole story takes place. After the cycle that the Elder Wand went through, passing from master to master, from Dumbledore to Draco and then to Harry, it finally returned to its rightful master's hand, Harry Potter. You see, the Elder Wand was unwilling to harm its rightful master. The killing curse of Arda Kedavra rebounded, which was the case that um, Voldemort cast in that moment and it hit Voldemort resulting in his ultimate death. That isn't the end of the story of the Elder One though. This is where the Harry Potter books and the movies contrast the most and honestly it's one of the only instances where the movie was better. In the movie Harry snapped the Elder One into pieces and chucked it away down into the chasm beneath the bridge leading up to Hogwarts. It was a pretty good ending and was a smart way to destroy the Elder One and the destruction that it could cause. Opposingly in the books Harry returned the Elder One to Dumbledore's grave. This was not the right idea or the right choice in my opinion though. I mean Harry is the rightful owner of the Elder One and put it simply if he loses a magical jewel at literally any point in his life going forward. The Elder One doesn't belong to him anymore, but rather to whoever defeats him. If news of where the Elder One got out, wizards and witches would be clamouring to have a go at Harry and try to win mastery of the Elder One, possibly setting up the whole murderous cycle again. But who knows? But either way, it is ultimately the Elder One that played a big factor in the downfall of Voldemort. When it comes to the Elder One, there are several plot holes and questionable pieces of information, but it's an interesting concept anyways. But one thing is definite about the Elder One, and best put by Xenophilius Lovegood himself, the bloody trail of the Elder One is splattered across the pages of wizarding history all right guys that is the end of today's video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe for weekly content including videos about your favorite fandoms like star wars lord of the rings harry potter hunger games and more anyways thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time